Today on Dead Dodge Garage, six pack stuff. The 70 Roadrunner is back. Six barrel, not six pack. Oh look, a new exciting leak. In this video, I refer to the six barrel setup on the Plymouth as a six pack like 17 times. But that's wrong. Also, go to deaddodgegarage.com and buy a hat. Oh, also, this is not a technical guide or really anything useful as far as installing and setting up a six pack, six barrel, whatever. We'll do that later. Uh, we were kind of short on time, as usual. If you haven't seen the first video on this car, you should definitely check that out. After being dragged out of a garage where it had been almost as long as I've been alive, we got it running in a day and I even drove it. Although it didn't have brakes or a throttle pedal or a lot of other things that would be nice to have. Despite me trying to explain this in the first video, more than a couple commenters were confused that it was a six pack car, but it doesn't have a six pack. That's the main thing we want to fix today. My coworker Evan's actually already been busy in here. He's installed the brand new engine harness it's not plugged into the firewall yet for some reason. But everything's kind of sort of routed. And he also took the liberty of replacing the water pump. Judging by the debris Tom left here, we're also changing the alternator, so that's interesting. The original engine is right here. Admire the special six-pack harmonic balancer with the D-weight on it. It's not as big or funky as the later cast crank balancer. It's special just to these six-pack engines. Casting date, February 25th, 69. It's pretty typical to have a three to six month lead time between the date the block was cast and the production date of the car it belongs to. So that early 1969 casting date does make pretty good sense. There's also a VIN stamping here, which does match our Roadrunner, so that's great. The reason for the funky balancer is the extra rotating weight. These rods found in the six pack engine are special. They're a lot beefier than the standard units. It's great this engine is here and someday it'll find its way back in that car. For now though, we'll be sticking with this great running 1969 440 HP. It's actually an original engine from a Coronet RT. Someone has taken the liberty of loosening the intake bolts, so I guess that makes my job here pretty easy. Let's pull that heavy chunk of scrap metal off and install this one. One of the great and unique features of the Chrysler Big Block is the dry intake manifold. There's no coolant crossover in it. All of the coolant plumbing is here in the water pump housing. So you can just unbolt it and rip it off of there without ever draining the water. Almost just as great as that, this reusable valley pan and intake manifold gasket. There is a raised edge around all the ports that sort of flattens out, but you can get several uses out of it without any issue. If you're worried about that, you can always apply some silicone, but yeah, I don't do that. I'll tell you right now, the six pack manifold, at least in cast iron, is quite a bit heavier than the single four. This is a mount location for a factory idle solenoid. Of course, we don't have one of those, but it would go there if we did. I should have done this before I pulled the manifold. I made an executive decision to try and clean this thing up a little bit before installing it, but uh, it's not really going well. Now I'd hate to make this too nice. I just want to knock some of this mud off. It's not even really grease, just grime. Well, I've been polishing the brass on the Titanic here for longer than I'd ever care to admit. And it's not amazing, but it looks better. Hey, the patina will match. Yeah, that's just way too nice. Well, we're trying to put together gaskets and hardware and let's just say things aren't going well so far. Here was our backup plan to make a gasket out of. Things are getting good. Just look at it. It's beautiful. It's missing something though. Oh. Inlets were loose. It's fine. We'll just take it back apart 17 times. I'll just spoil the surprise for you now. The reproduction fueling kit, not an amazing fit, but I got it. If you don't know anything about these six pack or six barrel setups, uh, it's kind of simple. It's the front of a Holly four barrel and the back of a Holly four barrel twice. I'm actually a six pack amateur, if that wasn't obvious. And I was trying to put the coil bracket here, but it goes here where it fits just fine. So, you know, lessons anyway. Now I have to make up a points trigger wire that'll reach back there because it's just a little longer. Air cleaner studs, installed. We've got the whole crew in on this one. We were missing the back air cleaner gasket, so Trev made one. Ignition system, not pretty, but functional. 
better than it was. Meanwhile, fuel system. Six pack uses three eighths lines and a matching pump. And we've basically spent all day looking for a tiny piece of line to put right here. <sighs> Special stuff. Haven't figured out our horrible oil leak on this valve cover. Um, it got hit by something. So he's engineering a fix. Man, we're so close now I could taste it. Although an alternator would be nice. Signs of life. Ooh. Look at that. Nice. Self-fixing Plymouth. Wow. No taillights though. While Tom reinstalls the alternator, I'm gonna do something I never ever do. I'll show you the fender tag. There. All you nerds can figure out what this car is. Well, you probably can't see this, but we actually have a neutral safety switch. I even tested it and it works. Okay, I tightened up the parking brake cable as well. And I think it does something. Mm -hmm. Well, does the horn work? What a profound disappointment. We're installing the new fuel tank right now. This is so close and yet so far away. The level of safety is off the chart. All right, no time like the present. Ready? Fire the hole. Again, again. I primed it, so. Go. 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 What the heck? Well, for some reason, we're not getting ignition power from our new harness. We get crank power, but no ignition one, so we're going back to the old faithful hot wire. Okay, go! Ah! Check the idles. Oh, that's a lot. Idle screws were way wrong. Classic blender. Hey, now it's on there for real. We might have gotten a little excited filling the can. Uh, so we're gonna let this thing breathe for a minute. Hmm, extra ventilation. All right, hit it. That's too much timing now. We kind of ran out of gas. That's fine. I didn't have a throttle pedal when I drove it. This is no fair. Brakes are extra. The horrible knocking noise is just a wheel trying to fall off. That's not a problem. Reverse lights? Too fancy. Also, did I mention it has no brakes? I feel like I did. So about that break, not so much. Look at the air grabber scoop. Ah, it's so cool. Oh, he wasn't kidding about the sensitive throttle. And uh, there's not enough return spring really, so that's a problem. But this is awesome. Oh, it just eventually throttles itself down. That's fine. We uh, kind of had to remove the Roadrunner horn to have somewhere to put the fuel reservoir. Well, that's okay because the horn relay didn't work anyway. <sighs> it's fine. It's only the second coolest part of the car. Or you know what? Maybe third. I really wish we could test the horsepower of the six pack setup. 
Unfortunately, brakes. That's uh, a problem. I'm 100% confident it would burn rubber, so. Ah, next time, I guess. It's idling too high to park, so I had to do the Flintstone brake. Oh, the throttle cable moved out of our improvised position. Well, there you go. The six barrel is back on the 70 Roadrunner, and it runs and does stuff. Next up for this car, brakes and a visit to the frame shop. So that's exciting. Everything's fine and good and totally fine. Man, it smells in here. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. And remember, it's a Plymouth, so it's not six pack, it's six barrel. I just have to not crash it. Oh yeah, everything's fine.